Hello, friends, and welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey, back again with some more Cowboys rumors. We've already freed Jordan Lewis, successfully, might I add. Is it time to free Blake Jarwin as well? I'm going to give this one four stars. It's, it's probably long overdue, quite frankly. Jason Witten continues to get the bulk of the snaps for the Cowboys, the same Cowboys team, by the way, that told you, oh, hey, we're only going to give Jason Witten 25 snaps per game. Hasn't even come close to that figure. Now, Witten is still the better blocker. I, I'm not going to argue against that. He's a much better blocker, frankly, than Blake Jarwin is. But Jarwin offers a heck of a lot more in the passing game right now. Jarwin's only playing about 27 snaps per game. Here are their season stats. Witten's gotten about over double the passes because he's been targeted more frequently. Got one more touchdown because he's used more in the red zone. It's all about usage there. Jarwin far more efficient. Blows my mind, by the way, that the Cowboys tried to tell everyone Witten's only going to play 25 snaps a game. He's averaging double that. I, it was never really in doubt in my eyes. But Jarwin brings you more in the passing game. And guess what? The passing game has been really darn good this year. Jeez, maybe you shouldn't have drawn up an RPO with a Witten as your first target down the stretch. Probably not a great idea. I already see it in the comment section. So everybody put it in there for me. Free Jarwin. I also saw a free Schultz, which I, I am a little bit surprised by. Frankly, I'm not feeling all that confident these days in Dalton Schultz. But I think you have to free Jarwin. It is 2019. The sooner the Cowboys accept their offense, needs to run through not Zeke Elliott, but through Dak Prescott and through that passing game, that is going to be the way to go if you're the Dallas Cowboys. So keep those free Jarwins going for me in the comment section. John Lewin, Winston, and Delunzek, all of them, Joshua too. It's just it's the best move for the Cowboys if you want to win games, of course. Moving on now to Dak Prescott. Is he going to win the passing title this year in the NFL, a.k.a. most yards? Weird to say out loud, but there's actually a pretty solid chance. I'm going to give it three stars. Frankly, he is... One of your favorites, if not the favorite. Now, this, of course, does assume, and it's a big assumption, that the Cowboys continue to let Dak Prescott sling it. He is second in total passing yards, third in yards per game, but the way with injuries set up, the way that, that buys set up, Dak's actually in pretty good shape to win that award. Or less, not, not award, designation. Which, by the way, is, is a is a sign of how much better Dak Prescott has been this year. He has not been a game manager. Someone tried to tell me that on Twitter. It's not the case. He's been actually a game leader so far. He's been incredible for the Cowboys. So here are your total passing yards leaders this season. Phillip Rivers leads the way with not even that big of a lead. 2,861 versus 2,016,777. 2, but look at the per game leaders here. The two leaders are Patrick Mahomes, Matthew Stafford. Problem is, Mahomes has already missed too many games to win the most passing yards in a season tag. Stafford also banged up more on him coming up here. Then it's Dak Prescott and Jameis Winston. It's going to be Dak Prescott versus Jameis Winston for the passing title this year, as I'm sure we all saw coming this year. Like, that's what we all predicted, right? That Dak Prescott was going to have a top five season for the Dallas Cowboys. As I have told you guys many a time before, we are giving away a custom-fitted sports jacket. But I, I got Kashiyama to up it just for you guys. So it's not going to be just the sports coat anymore. It's going to be a full-fledged suit. All you have to do to enter is follow Kashiyama Taylors on Instagram. All them on Instagram. We'll get that link in the chat for you guys. We will give it away live on Sunday. We'll be live after the Lions-Cowboys games end at the end. We'll give away that custom fitted suit. So make sure you guys tune in to find out if you have one. On top of that, by the way, if we get to 3,300 Instagram followers for Ka Kashiyama, we'll Venmo somebody 25 bucks tonight by the end of the show. We'll follow them on Instagram. We just put that link in the chat for you at Kashiyama Taylors. Need quite a few. I think you guys can pull it off here live on the Cowboys Report. All right, more Dak Prescott. The time to let Dak run a little bit more. This comes from actually from Jerry Jones, and I tend to agree. I'm going to give it three stars with a, a slight butt involved in this one. Now, Jerry's right. The Cowboys should use Dak's legs more, especially down in the red zone. It's a good idea. 
But I know it's also easier said than done unless you want to run quarterback runs or... Wait, also, what happened to the quarterback draw, by the way? That's a really good play that the Cowboys never use anymore. It frustrates me. Dak's on pace for a career low in carries, in part because he's been so great through the air. You don't always necessarily want to run the football. I like to use it, but you're more likely to get more yards through the air than you are with Dak Prescott on the ground. He's also going to have a career high in yards per carry, by the way. Here was Jerry Jones' quote. I want to see us be able to get it in there. He means the end zone, by the way, you perverts. How many times have we seen Dak run it in there for the score? I like that we had a form of run pass option on the goal line, which in a bubble I do too, by the way. It's just that the designs were poor. I thought that was the ticket. Let Dak sit there and option that thing to some degree. And that's what we were trying to do on the goal line. And again, the idea of an RPO and the idea of a read option makes sense. Although the, the run pass option, the run isn't for Dak, the run's for Zeke, but that's beside the point. But we'll focus on the read option side of it. I like read options. I don't think the Cowboys are leveraging their read options correctly. That's why you haven't seen Dak tuck and run all that much this year because they'll dial up the read option, but the, the, the angle for Zeke is too close to the actual read defender. So all of a sudden, you set yourself up in a scenario where the defender can take out both. Ty's always going to go to the running back in that scenario. So I would like to see Dak run more. It's also not as simple as just well, run the football with your quarterback. You, you want to avoid hits. You want to use those read options. I don't think the Cowboys have quite made it the most effective path so far, but I do want to see a little more. He's on pace for about 11 carries fewer. It's a significant chunk of change in his fewest four of those 57. All right, you guys all want Jason Garrett fired. I know how you feel. I get it. How about Greg Roman as a head coach? Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments section there on YouTube and on Facebook. I'm going to give it two stars. I I am intrigued by the idea. I think it could make some sense. Now, Roman has been floated around by several as a head coach candidate, and I don't mind it. If you don't know who Greg Roman is, I'll tell you. Ravens offensive coordinator. Historically speaking, he has done a fantastic job with mobile quarterbacks, especially this year with Lamar Jackson. Now, Greg Roman is not Lincoln Riley. I certainly want Riley before that. But you have to have alternative ideas, right? You have to have backup plans if you miss out on your number one, even number two guy there. So I don't think Roman is the best candidate, but I think he's a pretty darn good one. And I think you'd be able to get him if you're the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Roman, as I mentioned, has done a great job with quarterbacks who can use their legs. Obviously, this is points per drive. Shout out uh, Mike Renner for sending it to me here. 2019 with the Ravens. They are actually first in points per drive. This kind of helps, you know, balance out if you're a run-heavy team that controls the clock. The Bills with Tyrod or Tyrod Taylor, his his two best years by far came under Greg Roman. Ninth in 2016, 11th in 2015. When he was with the San Francisco 49ers, things regressed in 2014 with Colin Kaepernick, but they were still good with Colin Kaepernick as the quarterback for, for a Greg Roman-led offense. 12th, 9th, 12th, he had Alex Smith in there as well. The worst he's done is 22nd. That 2014 year was a pretty weird injury-laden year for the Niners, but he did he it got the most out of Kaepernick, the most out of Greg or out of Tyrod Taylor, and the most out of L Lamar Jackson. I think it's a pretty solid idea if you don't miss out, if you don't get your number one guy in Lincoln Riley. So let me know in the comments. Many of you guys are already doing it. Who do you want as the Cowboys next head? coach. Someone said Romo because Romo knows plays. Yes, that is indicative of a great coach. Lincoln Riley. I see already a fire Garrett. That's understandable right there. Lots of Lincoln Riley. Some Chris Peterson's in there. Lots of FGs now, so keep those coming. Sean Payton. Guys, give up the dream. Sorry, Tommy H. Great name, by the way. It's, it's just not going to happen. He signed the extension. He's not going anywhere. I agree, game time. Roman would take advantage of Dak scrambling there. Lots of Lincoln Riley's. Mike says me. Hey, I'm in. Let's see. I don't, I don't think Jason Garrett's ever led UAB to a national championship in NCAA 14. Clearly better than Garrett. All right, let's move on to the one you guys were all commenting about early. Understandably so. To the Cowboys sign Colin Kaepernick. That was the uh, suggestion from Fan Sided. I don't really agree with it. I'm going to give it the one star. It, there is a little bit of sensibility behind it, but I don't. I just I don't think it's likely. I don't think it's even that great of an idea. Uh, as I'm sure you know, the NFL having Kaepernick work out on Saturday 
the Cowboys will have a representative there. I think it's just going to be one of the area or one of the pro scouts. My problem with this isn't even about the kneeling. I don't really care. Keep the comments coming if you want to, yes or no, in the comment section. That's not really a big deal to me. It might be to Jason Garrett, but I would bet Kaepernick would say, yes, I'll stand if you sign me. I think that's what would happen there. My problem is on the field. Kaepernick, when he played, was a low-end starting quarterback caliber player and kind of regressed at the end of his tenure. But overall, he was a low-end starting caliber quarterback. Was he a superstar? No, of course not. Is he better than a lot of these bums out there? Of course. Who would you rather have, Colin Kaepernick or Mike White? It's obviously Colin Kaepernick, right? It's especially in the offseason and the preseason. But that's not where we are right now. We're in the middle of the year. It is November. The Cowboys can only carry so many players. Is, is Colin Kaepernick a better quarterback than Cooper Rush? Maybe. Do you have time to mess around and find out in the middle of the year? I certainly don't think so. Your best plan there is to hope Dak Prescott never gets hurt because you might be in trouble. But Kaepernick's not eligible for the practice squad. Who do you cut to make room for Kaepernick? And because he hasn't played in three years, is he really ready to play football right now? I, I actually don't think that's the case. That's not how sports work. You can be in the best shape of your life, but you're not unless you're actually playing. So in a bubble, yeah, I think I'd rather have Kaepernick than Cooper Rush, but not when Kaepernick has never seen this offense before. I opened it, exploring this in the offseason, but then Kaepernick's a couple more months older. He's even further away from football. I'm going to go with no. It's not because of, of his kneeling stance, because I don't think he helps the team right now. There's no harm in exploring it. In fact, the Cowboys are doing the right thing by going to check out his workout. But I think the end result is going to be, eh, thanks, but no thanks for Kaepernick and the Cowboys. Now, today's show is brought to you by BetDSI, the Internet's number one sports book. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use that promo code COWBOYS120 for a 120% deposit bonus. It's chatsports.com slash bet. That promo code COWBOYS120. No surprise, by the way. Lots of N's and no's coming in here on the Kaepernick discussion. So much what I expected. All right, last one here. How about Xavier Woods? Is he due for a breakout? I'm going to give this two stars, and I'll explain why, because I am still pro Xavier Woods. Don't get me wrong on that. Let me know if you guys are in the comment section. Yes or no there. Bleach Report pegs Xavier Woods as the Cowboys player who could still break out. I'm going to emphasize still, because... Has Xavier Woods already broken out? I think it's, I think that's the real question here. Has he? I kind of think that the answer is yes here. He's one of the few defensive backs who actually forced turnovers with the Cowboys, was banged up a little bit, is now healthy. You saw how well he played against the Giants. He's been really good this year. Now, he hasn't been Earl Thomas, Jamal Adams level. No, of course not. That's not who he's going to be, I don't think, in, at, at the end of his career. But he's going to be a good, if not really good, starter for you. Look at his numbers this year. He breaks up passes. He forces fumbles. He makes plays on the football. I now, I, I don't know if that qualifies as a full-fledged breakout in the same way that like, maybe Michael Gallup at the beginning of the year broke out. But I think that's the discussion to have. I don't want to make it seem like Xavier Woods has been bad or has been a disappointment. I don't really think he has been. Look, look at the takeaway leaders so far for the Cowboys. Tank Lawrence has got two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries as well. Xavier Woods, two interceptions, two forced fumbles. Cheetah Bay and Jordan Lewis, both with an interception and a forced fumble. Jalen Smith, two forced fumbles. And a variety of other guys in there like Byron Jones and, and Leighton Vanish who have one takeaway so far this year. So let me know in the comments section. Has Xavier Woods already broken out type one for yes type two for no let me know in the comment section i think he's closer to having already broken out than needing to break out so i'm actually going to type in one for yes maybe not the full fledged ex explosive breakout like it becomes earl thomas but you guys disagree two three for almost so if you guys will type in three like a lot of like winston and, and gino is I think that's, fi that, that's fine. I I'm on board with that one. I still think he's closer to one than he is two. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, 
and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.